Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem again. Uh, two videos back to back quite quickly this week. Um, we are looking at our Foundry VTT series, uh, Foundry version 11, where we have built the Stormwreck Isle adventure and we've got everything in here ready to go, ready to rock and roll. Um, we've built all this not using any add-ons. If you've been following the series, you will have heard me say that many, many times. Uh, but we're now in a position where we're starting to look at some of those add-ons that can make life just that little bit easier. So we've looked at tokenized so we can create ourselves some better looking tokens in our game world uh, and in the last video we looked at the torch add-on which enables us to uh, to use some better lighting effects for our characters when they light lanterns torches cast light spell and bits like that so in this one we want to look at uh, another add-on another relatively small simple one that really does add quality of life so if we take our, uh, just pop back over here. So if we take our test character here and we move them around. Now we know that this test character when we set it up, if I, not that way, double click left. Um, we've got the new sheet here, sheet here. We can see that they've got a walk speed of 30, which means they can walk six squares. Now, is that six squares? Is that more? Is that less? What about that? So one of the things is is it doesn't tell us how far we are moving and we can actually move as far as we like on here. So we're currently having to do a manual count of those squares. Is it a game breaker? Absolutely not. But it would be much easier if it would automatically tell us if we've moved far enough. That's where our next add-on comes in. So I've already downloaded the add-ons. You've seen that before. So if I go to our... Um, game settings at the top right I can go to manage modules here's all of the ones I've already downloaded from the main front screen and today we're going to be looking um, so we've got tokenizer on we've got torch on today we're going to be looking at this one called drag ruler now this is one the first one we've encountered that says it's got a dependency so to use this add-on, we have to have another add-on installed as well. Uh, and you can see it's called Socket Lib. Now the great thing is I don't need to manually worry about that. This automatically is saying, hang on a minute, you need that extra one as well. Do I also want to activate that? So I'm going to say yes. So if we scroll down, we can see Socket Lib is already ticked for us. Okay, so that's not a separate... Um, that's not a separate functional add-on, it's a background add-on that uh, enables some of our functions to work and integrate better. So let's save module, and again, it's going to reload for us, so that's now active. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's uh, just scroll in a bit so we can see our characters a bit better. And if we go up to top right, go to our game settings and configure settings, we now have drag ruler in here with its own set of options for us um, and settings we can use. So um, there's all sorts of things we can potentially tick and stuff if we want to do it uh, and change these settings. But again, all of the add-ons that I've seen so far come up, come set pretty well. The defaults pretty much match what I kind of want them to do. Um, you can see, will it automatically start measuring? Yes, that's what I want it to do. Show the Game Master ruler to the players. So when, I, when the Dungeon Master is moving monsters, can the players also see that that's measuring? That's up to you. Um, some uh, some DMs like to uh, slightly fudge things and, oh yeah, well, he, he I'll, I'll make him move that extra five foot just so that he's in combat range. I, I don't like to do that. I like to, if the players have got to pay by the rules, the monsters have to play by the rules as well. Um, but I could choose to hide that ruler so that any little uh, cheats, if you like, are hidden from the player. I'm not going to do that. Um, so yeah, you can have a look at these, change them if you want to. If there's anything you feel that you want to do, I'm going to leave all those defaults on. Now straight away, if I move this character, look what's different. So I'm holding down left button to drag my token. And as I do that, it's drawing a line straight away to show me where I'm moving. It is giving me how far, so it's giving me that 15 foot, how far I've actually moved. So I can move up to 30 feet, I can get to there. But it's showing the green squares that show which squares my character is actually traveling through. Um, and in this case, yes, that is 30 foot, but that requires my character to walk through what rock. So what I might do instead is say, well, I'm going to move uh, 20 foot to there. 
and then I can move that extra 10 feet. That's totally doable. That's a total of 30 feet, and that's what my character can move in one turn. What happens if I try to move beyond my maximum? So I can move 30 feet. As soon as I start to go beyond that, it changes that path to be yellow. So it's not saying I can't do it, but what it's saying is, is that's now becoming a dash action, and I'm moving at my maximum rate for that turn um, beyond my normal 30 foot. So I can do it, but it warns me that I'm going to be basically burning my action um, and using that as extra movement as part of the dash. If I try and go beyond that, you can see it turns red. It's like, unless I've got a spell effect or something that's going to make difference, um, then that is not going to allow me... Well, it will allow me to do it. I can still move it. I can still move to there. But it's flagging up that actually I shouldn't be able to do that under normal circumstances. So what happens if I've taken a potion of speed or I've got um, magic boots that make me move faster? How's that going to affect this? Well, to be honest, what you should be doing in that instance is you, this uh, walk speed is what should give, get updated. We should be updating that to say that actually what the speed is now rather than um, fudging on the measuring. So that's a really good little um, little thing we can do there. Look, we can do it with the myconoids. Um, they can only move 10 foot. So a dash for them is 20 foot. They can't move 25. Uh, and remember, we left that option on that the players would be able to see that um, when I move, when I as the DM are moving our creatures. Again, Sturges don't move very fast at all. Um, they haven't got much move, but we need to bear in mind that they've got a fly of 40. Um, what would be good is if you can say what the default is here. Hmm. But you, you can't. Their default is walking. So this is picking up only their walking speed, which is very small compared to their fly speed, which would be 40. Is that a big deal? No, it's not a big deal. Um, is there a way that we can potentially customize that? I don't think there is. Let's go back to let's go back to our configure settings. Before I do that, let's choose an icon that isn't in that dripping sound. Um, use base uh, use speed based snapping. Uh, speed provider settings. The speed provider settings contain all the game settings. Let's just have a look at that. Uh, well, this is where it's saying about what color it's using for those various stages. Um, what the multiplier for dash is. So dash, you can move tw up to twice your movement. It's looking here and saying what is the speed att att attribute. So by default, it's saying it's the movement walk. If we change that to movement fly, that would be looking at the fly speed for everybody. Um, so our player characters as well, who mostly are going to have zero. So we wouldn't want to change that. That's not going to be helpful. So I can't actually see a way of saying... Um, I can't actually see a way of saying we, the, how we can pick that. Big deal? Really, really not. Um, I, I, don't, I don't care about it. If I'm moving Sturges around, I know that they can move 40 feet. Uh, if I forget how much they can move, let's come off of that. If I forget how much they can move, I've only got to double click and it reminds me it's 40 feet. Um, yeah, they can get most of the place in this cavern. The chances are Sturges are not going to be moving huge distances because they tend to be ambush predators. Um, so I'm, I'm not worried about that. I, I'm happy to live with that minor inconvenience when compared with the um, the, the massive benefits to the player's experience as well as um, I just realized these little fellas aren't hidden I want to hide these make them slightly less obvious <laughs> um, yeah so I think that's a really good little add-on it's quick it's easy it's simple to use you just install it you can run with the defaults as we've just saw there are things we can change but I don't see any need to and suddenly we've got a measurable ruler that will tell us how far we can move nice easy one quick easy little video guys uh, again if you have alternative rulers that you use that you think are better more suitable or, or even just different um, by all means drop a, a comment in happy to have a look at some of those other ones because um, I'm only picking the ones that I think are probably the right thing for my game if you've got a better version let me know we can try it out um, and then you guys can see both of them in action and you can make your decision of which is the best for your game. Like I say, for mine, I think this is probably perfectly adequate. 
Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, leave a like in the video. Hope this has been helpful. Show help show you what kind of uh, modules might be as suitable for your game. And I will see you in the next one.